congenital anomalies. Outline Cleft lip and palate Congenital diaphragmatic hernia CDH Anal fissure Pylonidal sinus and abscess Encephalocele Cleft lip and palate Cleft lip may be unilateral or bilateral, the extent varying from a notch in the vermilion border to a large cleft reaching the flow of the nose. Accompanying anomalies include cleft palate and supernumerary deformed or absent teeth. Cleft palate, when occurring in isolation, is in the midline. It involves only the ovula or reaches the incisive foramen through soft palate. When occurring in association with cleft lip, it involves the soft palate and exposes the nasal cavity on one or both sides depending on whether the defect is unilateral or bilateral. Congenital diaphragmatic hernia CDH Etiopathogenesis This condition is characterized by herniation of abdominal contents into thoracic cavity as a result of a developmental defect in the diaphragm, usually through the posterior lateral foramen of Bogdalic on left side, pulmonary hypoplasia and malrotation of gut. Associated anomalies include esophageal atresia, omphalocele, CNS lesions, cardiovascular lesions and syndromes as trisomy 21, trisomy 13, trisomy 18. Clinical features 80 to 90 percent of the affected infants have neonatal respiratory decompensation with him the first hour of life with tachypenia, retractions, cyanosis and gasping. Clinically, these neonates have asymmetric funnel chest but shift of the mediastinum, absent breath sounds and presence of peristaltic sounds on the affected side. Heart sounds are displaced and abdomen is scaphoid. 10 to 20 percent of children who present later do so with recurrent chest infections, abdominal pain, or features suggestive of gastric volvulus. Diagnosis A plain X-ray of abdomen and chest in a suspected case shows intestinal loops in the chest cavity, a finding diagnostic of CDH. It is appropriate to do blood gas analysis to assess the extent of hypoxia and acidosis. Treatment After confirmation of diagnosis, all efforts are made to stabilize the cardiorespiratory system. As the respiratory distress in an infant with CTH results from interplay of two factors, uncorrectable pulmonary hypoplasia and potentially controllable pulmonary hypertension, all efforts are made to decrease the pulmonary arterial pressures to decrease the right to left shunting. A nasogastric tube is placed and a rectal syringing given to deflate the stomach and colon respectively. Ventilation by bag and mask is contraindicated and, if required, an endotracheal tube is placed. The infant is sedated and metabolic acidosis and hypoxia is corrected. CDH is no longer considered a surgical emergency. Instead, it is a physiological emergency to control the hypoxia by adequate preoperative stabilization. Once stable, the child is taken up for laparotomy and reduction of viscera with repair of the diaphragm. Good results can be expected if the pulmonary hypoplasia is not very severe. 
Anal fissure. Anal fissure is the most frequent cause of fresh rectal bleeding and usually follows a tear or small laceration of the mucocutaneous junction of the anus during passage of a hard fecal matter in a severely constipated child. A vicious cycle of constipation, painful defecation, stool retention or constipation sets in. A simple anal examination demonstrates the fissure. Treatment aims at softening stools by dietary correction and use of stool softeners so that the healing area is not stretched. Surgical intervention in the form of excision of the fissure, anal sphincterotomy or stretching of anus is in actuality not required. Pylonidal sinus and abscess. The term pylonidal sinus denotes a depression or dimple in the intergluteal cleft at the level of the coccyx in otherwise normal infants. Some of these children may develop pylonidal abscess, which may need incision and drainage, followed by an on block resection of the tract. Encephalocele. It is a meningeal sac together with cerebral cortex, cerebellum, or portions of the brain stem herniating through a bony defect in the skull, cranium bifidum, usually in the occipital region. The size may vary from small to as big as exceeds the cranium. There is high risk of developing hydrocephalus due to aqueduct stenosis or a Chiari malformation and Dandy Walker syndrome. Association of occipital encephalocele with cleft lip or palate, microcephaly, abnormal genitalia, congenital nephrosis and polydactyly is termed Meckel-Gruber syndrome. Prognosis is poor. Most of the patients develop facial problems, seizures, mental retardation and microcephaly. Prenatal diagnosis is possible by estimation of alpha fetoprotein level and by parietal diameter on ultrasonography.